the 1980s was an incredibly big time for the growth of single lens reflex film cameras. You saw amateurs getting far more interested in trying to get a high level of quality in their work. And all the manufacturers like Olympus, Pentax, Canon were coming out with very sophisticated cameras that were taking the full use of new technology. So you had things like the Canon A1, which had a whole lot of automatic modes which hadn't been seen in a camera before. And although these high level cameras were very successful, there was definitely a need for single lens cameras, um, single lens reflex cameras appealing to the amateur and someone who wanted a high quality camera but that, that was simple to use. And Olympus in the early 80s did really well with the OM10, which was a single lens reflex camera which used aperture priority auto mode, as it was then called, um, for the majority of photos, although you could buy a little manual adapter. The OM10, a highly successful camera, by the mid 80s, automatic focusing was beginning to be really popular with manufacturers and the public um, and was seen as the future. Olympus launched something called the um, o, um, I think it was OM707, which was autofocusing but had issues and it wasn't very successful. So in 1988, they launched this, which was the OM101. And I hadn't really come across this before. I had read it a little bit in the press when it was launched back in 1988, but I think I saw it as a bit of a gimmick camera. However, when I recently obtained one, I was amazed with what a fascinating camera it is. On the first view, it looks very much like a normal single lens reflex camera. However, you look at the lens and you think, how does this focus? The camera is not auto-focusing, but it has this knob at the back, which is called power focus. So you actually look through the viewfinder and you focus from the button there. Now, I was surprised in use how well this actually worked. Um, it's not autofocusing, but the viewfinder is so clear, it is incredibly easy to use. So point number one, to load the film, you face straight forward in there, nice clear back on this camera, indicating there where to put the feeder in, close it, and it loads easily. I really like the fact with this camera, it uses triple A batteries. Would be a little bit better if it took AA batteries, but triple A, absolutely fine. A lot cheaper than the CR123s and batteries like that. So that's something really positive about the camera. If we look how to use the camera, apart from the focusing, we have either P for program, turn the camera off completely there. We have a camera check, nice beep there, very similar to the OM10, although this looks very different, that feature is very similar. Then we have a M or A. Now, this is where, again, the camera takes something from the OM10, which is an adapter. So we have an adapter on the end here, which can come off when it's off. The camera is in completely auto mode. That is the adapter off. I presume when the camera was new, it had a cover across there. Again, putting this back on reminds me a little bit of how you put the flash on a um, Olympus XA camera. So we have the adapter on, and then when we have the adapter on, in aperture priority, we simply 
select the aperture we want and the camera will automatically select the shutter speed or we can put it in M and if there we have no measured metering in the window we can basically put whatever shutter speed we want and whatever aperture we need. Interesting that the top speed of this camera is 200th of a second so that's nice and fast. The viewfinder information was criticised at the time. You've either got uh, when you are on, on P and you look through you basically have a P in the viewfinder to say you're on program. Likewise A when you are on aperture priority and when you are on manual actually I did make a mistake when I said it had no metering for manual it has got arrows so you have got a metering mode the arrows stop when it's in the it's difficult to get it is certainly in the middle but you basically go for in between up and down what's the camera like to use very good question I took this out and all, I've always been impressed with Zuko lenses, with Olympus lenses. And on here we've got a 50mm f2 lens. Let's have a look at some of the photos I took. One of the first points in using the camera was I did find that it needed good AAA batteries. First of all, I put in some cheap ones and it just didn't seem to have enough power. I don't know if that's the camera or whether it's um, for smart batteries. Looking at the photographs, it was quite a dull afternoon and this is Stinsford Church where Thomas Hardy is buried and that's Thomas Hardy, um, well the grave of Thomas Hardy. I thought the exposure could have been a little bit finer there but that's okay. Uh, I was playing about with the depth of field so this one is on um, I think f2 and it's actually a bit too soft I didn't quite get the focus point right there now this photo is on I think it was f8 and you notice we've got far more depth of field there and it is nice and sharp I found the photos rooftops here in Dorchester nice and sharp I think that was about 5.6 the high street it was a very dull afternoon. Again, you don't get the information in the viewfinder about the shutter speeds or the aperture. These are on program mode and I was pleased with how well the shots came out. They were incredibly sharp in places. One or two sometimes, that's not as, this is the right hind by the river and it's a little bit soft soft there but I, as I said very dull afternoon and I expect there was an about 5.6. I always like signs and I like signs when they are looking a bit tired and dirty and this 20 mile zone I like the effect there. This is the high street Fordington rather grey but it's it's a good strong punchy lens I was pleased with how punchy this lens was looking at the Salvation Army here it's incredibly easy to use you are in effect using a point and shoot camera but the great thing about point and shoot camera is it relies on you looking and surely as a photographer the most important thing is what we see in the viewfinder um, how we decide to capture that how we decide what we make so many choices I mean looking at these gowers with the houses over the top I really like the fact that the greys are nice um, they could be slightly softer but I like that effect in a very dark car park sign
The one of Fordingdon um, downtown Dorchester is again a little bit soft. I've uh, noticed on the right hand side, I think the I've had a focusing error there, obviously. Where the others are incredibly, as I said, sharp. I didn't expect to enjoy using the OM101. As I said, when I first read about it back in the 80s, I thought it was all a bit of a gizmo and um, wasn't sure whether it was a proper camera. Having used it, I really enjoyed using it. It could allow me to concentrate on the competition, think about what I was taking, the focusing was nice, and I got results I was quite pleased with. So if you see a OM101, and I, to be honest, haven't seen many of them, I don't think they are particularly common. The prices seem to be very reasonably um, priced on eBay. I paid next to nothing for this one. You should be, I would hope you would get one for about, fifth, um, sorry, for about 10 to 20 pounds. If you looked around, if you find one, why not have a go? Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.